Jacobowski? Here. Council Member Tall? Here. Council Member Udy? Here. Vice Mayor Shepard Rami? Yes. Mayor Wong? Here. Chairperson Swanson? Not yet. Vice okay. Chairperson Malno? Here. Trustee Chen? Oh, here. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Derry? Stay here. She's here. Trustee Domeyer? Here. Trustee Hollingsworth? Here. And Trustee Sue? Here. The agenda is posted 72 hours prior to each meeting, and we welcome public comments. Any public comment? Seeing none. We also uh, will go to open session. Uh, first one's radio frequency identification system. I'm sorry. Did you uh, wish to introduce uh, ourselves, right? <laughs> why don't we go around? Uh, why don't we start with? Uh, I'm Liz Hollingsworth, and I'm delighted to be in the third year of my term um, as a library trustee. Uh, Steve Gilmire, this is my first year as a library trustee. Uh, Gretchen, my first chairman as a city council member. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Joel. And the all now, uh, vice chair. And <laughs> <laughs> which is a which is a really good thing because it's been fun, Thank and you. I'm I'm not counting the days to Thank you. finish. <laughs> And I want to echo that about that feeling that we have done, and I, I lost track, and I'm also a library board member for many, many years, I think. Oh, what's your name? Mary Sue. <laughs> I have so much fun at the moment. I'm Irene McDermott, I'm city librarian. Genevieve Chien, first term uh, library trustee. Susan Jacobowski, first term council member. As you can tell, we all remember, so we must not be having fun. This <laughs> <laughs> is my, my third month as a mayor. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and then? I'm Marcella Marlon, City Manager. Okay, all right, so now we can start with the RFID. And, and in the absence of uh, Trustee Swanson, I'm going to say a few words about RFID, which stands for Radio Frequency <coughs> Identification. This, uh, this technology has been in use in libraries for about 20 years. Uh, we thought that it would improve our productivity, and so we asked the foundation, the library foundation, and they gave us $50,000, and there was about 4,000 more of cost available there, so the friends of the library stepped in and paid for the rest of it. We have implemented the system, we implemented it last July, uh, and it's just working very well for check-in and check-out. Uh, we have to tag the radio frequency tag in every book in our library, and we have 90,000 books. So far, we've tagged about 30% of the collection. We have all the children's materials tagged, and that's good because people check out, you know, 10 to 20 of those at a time, so we just put them on a pad and it goes, boop, 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 checks them out. Uh, we finished the young adult area, and we're going to move on to the uh, adult nonfiction area. We hope to be finished sometime in 2020. Um, we, we hope to have a tag and push in August. Uh, the, not only will the will it increase our productivity by allowing clerks to be able to check out a staff of books at a time and check in a staff of books at a time. We'll, we'll implement the self-checkout as soon as we have a majority of the books tagged in the library. Uh, we'll also have uh, gates, electronic gates, when people leave or come in. If somebody hasn't checked out a book, the, the screen lights up on which clerk's uh, computers and tells them what book it is. So, excuse me, you have Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, please bring that back and let me check that out for you. Uh, a final feature of this system is that it has, we have a scanner. So, we can look for a book, sometimes books get out of place. You can run the scanner down the row of RFID tag books, it will tell you which book is out of place. Or it will also tell you 
it up. It gives you the, uh, if you're looking for a specific book, it will light up with a specific book. <coughs> and that's my report on RFID. Any questions? <coughs> yes, ma'am. I think you said you were about a third of the way through with putting the RFID tags in the books. Correct. Would there be a benefit or a desire, or isn't it, isn't it necessarily so, um, to have a call to action among citizens, to have a small group to be trained to assist in expediting this, or is that not necessarily a focus? That's an excellent question, Council Member. Um, we have decided not to go that route because it does take some skill to tag the books, and we have two tagging stations that are, are portable and can be taken out into the stacks. So there's really no way we can employ more than that. So only two persons at a time are using it? Yes, correct. That makes sense. But what, what we hope to do is uh, maybe close the library during a very slow time in late August, in late July, early August, and just take a push. That way we can do tagging at the actual circulation stations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, that concludes my report on RFID. Right, the next one is the library program. Programs uh, mm -hmm. that the no, thing of the adults. Okay, uh, I talked about the programs uh, last year also, and I focused on the children. So I thought this time I'd focus a little bit on adults. You'll hear uh, more on the uh, Chinese programs uh, a little bit later. These, this lovely book that comes out um, several times a year has in it um, many of the programs. First thing, that what I want to say is, uh, looking back and over the last six months, we've had over a thousand people have attended the various programs that we've been putting on. And this, these are just the adult programs, not the children's, and the number of people that attend the children's programs are uh, very substantial also. We have some programs that are repeated and are constantly uh, in demand and have a fairly large turnout. Some of them uh, related to health, we have, uh, at times, we have uh, USC uh, professors, uh, some emeritus that come in. Uh, we're going to have, in April and May, um, Dr. Tom Mason is going to come back with his Jazz and Swing series, which has been very popular in the past. Uh, we have uh, LA Opera Talks that help uh, any of the citizens that want to attend some of the operas uh, at the Music Center. They can come and listen to the talks before they go. Um, there are programs uh, for personal development. One that's coming up is a creative writing program. Um, there are programs sometimes for our personal safety. Uh, there's one that I'm thinking I really might like to attend myself. It's called How to Prevent Identity Asset Theft. And it, it's uh, going, they're going to explain, you know, basically how the cyber criminals work. Uh, give us some strategies on how to uh, protect ourselves. I think that's something that we all worry a little bit about. I mean, we have wonderful technology now, but it's kind of the good news, bad news. So um, that one we have, that, of course, our Dacom uh, Brain Fitness Center, which is actually, you know, I, I, there's a, I think a little bit of a misconception. It's not just for people who are are having trouble. It's a, it's actually it's for people and you know anybody 50 and over who just wants to make sure that they're actively using their brains mm -hmm. and keeping them going. Uh, we have uh, several rooms that we rent out or <coughs> use for uh, library-based programs. And in just looking over our um, uh, the rentals and the use of the bathroom and the Thornton conference room upstairs. Over the past year, we are uh, we have increased our use. Uh, these rooms are very well used, and they're popular with the community. We have community programs too, like for example, the historical society will come in and bring speakers in. Those are always uh, very well attended uh, too. And uh, and again, many many children's programs. Any questions? Uh, other than through the program, how do you get word out that you're going to have? It's on our website, uh, the community calendar on, um, was it, it's, it's, well, we're linked to the city, so it's part of the community calendar. Uh, we have uh, boards up at the library so when people come in they can see what's, uh, what's on that day or what's coming up in the next couple of days. They're, 
advertised that way. And uh, I think this is, I think, I know when my children were growing up, I always looked forward to this, you know, and I, I have to say it for two reasons the recreation programs and the library programs, because those were the two that I was interested in for my children to be uh, taking part. And so I think, I think this is a really good uh, tool that our city uh, produces, and I hope it continues. Also, council member, we have a library assistant, a librarian, part-time librarian, who is our publicity librarian, and she puts out professional press releases at least six weeks before all the events. And where do they publish? Well, she sends them all around the city, uh, meaning in Los Angeles. Once one showed up on ABC 7 in the morning, and it was really wrecked <laughs> havoc because he had so much. Too much publicity. Council Member Jacobowski. Yes, I'd like to commend you on the diversity and the quality of the programs. I've attended a fair number myself. Um, about Jacob. Um, you've had that for a while now. How long, approximately? I would say we uh, got that. It was before. It was before. Yeah. Yeah. So, We've had it for at least five yeah. years, I think. Yeah. And uh, the, leading from that, um, since you've had it five years, are you seeing a trend? Is the use um, continuing to stay steady? Is it decreasing, increasing? Um, the use is increasing. And really? We have more and more people who get addicted to it. They get Jacob cheaper. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then they is there a treatment for that? <laughs> or or do do? Yeah. And how many people can do Dacum at one time? We have two Dacum machines, so two people can do it at a time. They're 20 minute sessions. I, I've heard it uh, among cocktail talk, so um, it's good that the word is getting around that many people enjoy going there regularly. Yes. Good. Thank you. Um, I actually have a question. Is it possible to start something like Nixo, you know, um, like where the police have the like, text to everyone's cell phone to remind them, hey, there's a program tonight at a library. Can we do that? I, I mean, don't know. So actually, part of what we're trying to do now, part of what we're trying to do is that streamline all of the notifications. We currently have many different systems that we send things out, and as part of the new rollout of our website, we're going to try to find a way to have one system that gets all that information out there, and of course it could publicize library. That way, you know, we'll yeah. be reminded of all the programs that have been That's a very good suggestion. That's a, yeah. That's a good suggestion. Thank you. Okay. Next is Chinese program. I'll, I'll be talking about that. Um, San Marino has celebrated our centennial not that oh, well, a while back, but you'll think this is an old city. But we have a very modern library. And when I say modern library, I don't really mean the you know, structure being new and this and that. Apparently, modern library, this, uh, the definition would be um, in, instead of a traditional library that provides a transactional um, service, meaning lending books, um, and the librarian probably help you out with the, their collection, this and that. But a modern library is a place where you build relationships. And this is what I find our library is doing, and I'm so proud, even though I'm really new at this <laughs> board, but, um, So I'm so proud that we are actually in the leading, um, but we're leading this in a very old, well, old city. Mature city, let's call it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, San Marino Public Library, has been offering all kind of activities like she has already <coughs> mentioned, but San Marino Chinese Club has been really involved recently. Since I looked at the census, U.S. Census, that uh, San Marino has more than 50% Asian residents now. So San Marino um, Chinese Club has offered various program from, <coughs> well, they're starting to teach Chinese, beginning Chinese this morning. <laughs> but um, in the past, they have uh, offered Mahjong workshop, and they have offered the Chinese lantern building, and uh, paper cutting, and what else? They, have? Uh, they will be doing Tai Chi, and um, also the Chinese version. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Rush paint, yeah. and then calligraphy, and all kinds, et cetera, et cetera. But the one that I'm going to, well, the two things that I'm going to talk quickly about is the Mahjong game that went very well. It was well received. Um, I don't know if anyone here are familiar with this. I I, I didn't really know. So that. did you. I, yeah. I, I didn't Genevieve know. and I played. I'm a Chinese person, but I never played. <laughs> <laughs> so this white. Was, Shut up. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was sitting next to Gretchen, Gretchen Wan. <laughs> <laughs> Gretchen Wan. <laughs> Gretchen Wan. That's my name, Bolt. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> next <laughs> time. Next time. We're going to clean her out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... They offer the programs on a monthly basis. I think initially they were uh, kind of aggressive, thinking every other week with a new program, but it takes a lot of effort to bring everything into a good program to share. So um, now they have, I've talked to them. They said um, once a month seems like it's a good pace for them. and. Um, so the Mahjong is a game of, it consists of 144 uh, tiles that usually takes four people to play. But I heard there's different ways of playing in different countries. Mm -hmm. But let's just talk about the one that we learned. <laughs> um, and it's a ancient game. It's actually started from Qing Dynasty. That's 1600s approximately. That's when the game was developed. So um, it has spread throughout China, uh, throughout the world since early 20th century. So that's not that long ago. Um, the game is um, based on Chinese characters and symbols. So that's the difficult part. I heard Jewish people play with a cheat sheet. I saw that on the cruise boat, but I am not sure that No that's cheat sheets. No? Some, some women had done it for 40, 50 years, and oh. it's a, a common <coughs> social thing. With all the Chinese character, wouldn't yeah. that be kind of difficult? Um, there are cheat sheets initially, but oh. you know, they've been playing 40, 50 years. Yeah, I was been told by the ladies on the cruise ship, they said they have a little cheat sheet. So, um, so I took their word. Takes, pra takes practice. practice. <laughs> and um, the game, Amaja is a game of skill, strategy, and calculation. And it also involves a degree of chance. So the workshop was very well received last year, so it's coming back. When? <laughs> I haven't seen that on the calendar, but hey, the, they have told me that uh, it's coming back, so they will be purchasing new Mahjong tiles, because last time you bought them. Yeah, I know. Uh, a winner. By you know. the way, Mahjong comes with like, this addiction, too. Oh, it does? Yeah. I got it on my phone, so I'm ready. <laughs> really? Yeah, we'll talk after. She plays it during city council meetings. <laughs> <laughs> you brought your own tiles? That's what you want? Is that, is that legal? Is that legal? <laughs> <laughs> it's like your own bowling ball. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. like well, yeah, Mario. that's what they were saying. It's yeah. strategy and all that. But um, it's a brain training. Uh, so can yeah, I go play. off the record for the little side note? <laughs> also, in Asia, often there is a thing called political mahjong. So the politician plays mahjong together. Because oh. it's a strategy kind of a um, game. And um, <laughs> so there could be, so how many city councils do we have? We could rotate out each. <laughs> <laughs> so that, my valley, the Brown Act. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you guys don't play together. That's yeah. right. <laughs> That's right, because of a game of four, right? You can't be three or oh, you can't, no, you yeah. three. two or more. Two, two. two, two or two or two <laughs> is math. <laughs> okay. Two. You're right. So the other one that was fun to talk about is um, the paper cutting. Oh, am I taking too long? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll, paper cutting that started from a early, I think dated back to second century. And this is a very simple kind of art. Um, they cut them with one piece of paper, usually it's red, 
um, for festivals. Usually it's the Lunar New Year or somebody's wedding and they decorate their, um, they cut it out with Chinese character or sometimes birds or whatever animals that's appropriate for this uh, occasion and decorate the window to let their neighbors to know that we're celebrating something. So that goes way back and it doesn't cost a whole lot. Just a piece of red paper, well red in Chinese culture is uh, luck. So um, very, very simple um, material for celebration. And that was very well received as well. So that's the two highlights that I'm going to talk about. And then um, they're newly in inviting Tai Chi to bring Tai Chi uh, coming up. And also Feng Shui is coming. And Feng Shui meaning wind and uh, water. So that's uh, very common in the Chinese culture to whether they're looking for a house <coughs> or selling a house, buying a house, this is something important. So if you're in real estate development, you might want, and if <laughs> there's a lot of Asian people around, you might want to consider to get yourself uh, a little bit uh, familiar with that. And um, bottom line, declutter. <laughs> um, <laughs> let the wind breathe. <laughs> um, another great program. Now this is um, all offered in English. The other program is a group of four ladies that San Marino residents. They are uh, community members, uh, volunteers, they're educator, uh, world speakers. Um, they have incredible credential. What they offer, uh, one thing is called um, coffee, tea, and chat. So this is offered in Mandarin. They are mainly targeted newly immigrant family to bring them on board quickly to understand the new community they're in and help them to smooth transition to uh, their kids to the San Marino schools. And um, another program, oh, they are also licensed therapists, I think, or life coach. Life coach. There, it's called uh, joyful living. Jo yeah, joyful living. So they teach you how to practice being happy. Um, so that's a dialogue, constantly workshop, something that to for self improvement. So I think our library really has become a modern library that provides a place for people to come together, learn and learn from each other, and chat with your neighbor, or meet your neighbors. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Passport Acceptance Service. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Passport Acceptance Services, and uh, the Passport Acceptance Fees continue to be an integral part of the World Public Library's budget. Um, the city operating metrics show a fluctuation, but we're in, moving in the right direction. Um, in 2017-18, the actual revenues were $222,000, and our budgeted revenue for this current year is $215,000. That's a lot of passports. <laughs> um, we are well on our way to achieving the $215,000. Um, the year-to-date revenue at the end of January was already $127,621. Um, passport services are promoted. They're on the front name page of our website. And you just click on a little icon of a passport and it takes you to all of the information. Um, we also have it um, in the Tribune. There's a weekly um, corner, community corner where recreation and library programs are advertised. And from time to time, the passport services are also included in that. Um, Passports can be um, applied for Monday through Fridays from 10 to 2.30 on a walk-in basis where you have to wait your turn. Um, they also make appointments on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and those are usually <coughs> fully booked in advance. Um, as the trustees meet and look at our budget, thanks to Chris Hugh and Irene McDermott, um, we always ask these questions, we like, those right into passport revenues. Some months they're up a little bit, and some months they're down a little bit. 
And we kind of asked, when is everybody in town going to have their passports already? <laughs> and um, right now, many people are getting their passports because some of the travel requirements have changed. Um, the California driver's license versus the real ID is an issue for people. And passports are a good alternative to the real ID and are much easier to obtain. Um, right now, to get a DMV appointment for the real ID is 10 to 12 weeks. And um, with a Crowell Library appointment, after they completed the application and paid their fees, the State Department takes only four to six weeks to process their passport. Um, the passport program was conceived of, designed, implemented, and continues to be overseen by librarian Jeff Plumley. And um, he is a superstar. I can't think of any other um, program in town that raises this kind of money to support a city program. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing. We don't even ticket people that much. <laughs> <laughs> True. Get on that. Uh, one thing that I'm really excited about was at the bottom of the latest um, happening at the library announcement, and that is that um, it's the state of California has given a grant, and public libraries <coughs> are offering the New York Times. You can down, get it every morning for free on your oh, device. Oh, oh. And you have to um, do it. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> so you the library. You have to have your library card number, which is very easy to keep in your notes and copy paste in. And um, you can turn the New York Times mm -hmm. every day for free. So it's very exciting. It goes back to 1996. I'm just excited to have today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to have you today. 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 I'm excited to have what percentage would you guess currently are non-residents getting passports at the library? I don't think we keep that. I don't think we collect that information. It'd be helpful to know because we should have a lot of traffic and it would be exciting if we could build on the area. Maybe that's taken us beyond all the residents getting theirs. Yes, and the passport information is on the actual national passport site we're listed and you can say well where can I get a passport around me and my, just my exactly. so we pop up we thank you for a good review we probably get very good review <laughs> <laughs> good, good service good service good, good job service. well I mean we have about 13,000 residents and you need a new passport every 10 years so and then sometimes you run out of pages like myself Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Humble brag. That's too bad. Yeah, that's not what I meant. Oh, that's too bad. 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 Oh, that's this is great. She did a wonderful job. I just had mine renewed. Mm -hmm. And that landmark. Yeah. They do the photo as well as that. Yeah. Well, because you know, yeah. the, for the renewals, you have to Buy. mail it in. Yeah. Mail it in because of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I just went in and, had, and got did my picture. Did it all through that. Yeah, got my picture. That's mm -hmm. great. They'll, right. fill all, they'll fill the form out for you, too. It's well, a great service for check. residents mm -hmm. and others. Check. I mean, check. it really is. Yeah. 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 Their money. Yeah, the fact that it's a money generator too is a double benefit. All right. So, so next we have Crane Art uh, Gallery. Good evening, Mayor and Councilmen. Um, oh, Councilmen. Councilmen and woman. <laughs> yeah. She's a councilwoman. Uh, councilwoman first. Councilwoman. All right. I know. I use it as a general term too often. I forgot that this is a big, this is 2019. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, next time I'll make it all five females so we'll have this problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I should be sensitive to that. I myself belong to the yes. category. Yes, I absolutely. My report about the Frank Art Gallery. 
If you are a branding specialist and you are asked to review the brand promise of City of San Marino, <coughs> a brand promise <coughs> represents an expectation from the product or services. Where would you be looking for confirmation of this premier quality? The retention of real estate price, the school district performance indexes, the street cleanness, Lacey Park, or City Hall. But where could you experience the quality of culture and humanity better than our Cornwall Public Library? The crown jewel of this premium cultural expression will be at Crane Art Gallery. It is situated along the east-west hallway between the community room and the lifelong learning center inside our library. The purpose of the Queen Art Gallery as depicted on our website, the gallery is a community cultural space for display of artwork by local artists. Local area is defined as the San Gabriel Valley, that which includes <coughs> San Marino and has priority. Since the library's inception in January 2009, it has hosted about 90 exhibitions and helped promote 160 talented artists with their original artwork. Our exhibit has advanced many artists with their career. Queen Art Gallery was approved in July 2008 by San Marino City Council. The Queen Art Committee assured the city that no city funds would be used to maintain this art gallery. All startup funds were donated by friends and family of Carolyn Crane to, a co to commemorate Carolyn Crane. She was a city librarian for 17 years until shortly before her death in spring 2008. She wanted a place to display art as there had been in the old library. And just a sign of all the really established public library have an art gallery, always. Uh, we are in keep with our, our tradition that we wanted a gallery to be a place where all artists, whether new or accomplished, could exhibit free of any monetary restriction and align with free access to knowledge and information. This is our library theme. There is no hanging fee, nor do we uh, ask for a, a monetary percentage of sale. Voluntary 20% donation is only a recommendation from sales. Queen Art uh, Gallery Committee consists of five volunteers, Sandy Morris, you might know uh, some of them, uh, them. Uh, Deborah Sajun, Eva Margarita, and Rosa Z, and one of our librarian staff, Linda Lian, and myself. So far this year, it has hosted six exhibits, two of which were curated group shows. So a total of 35 artists have shown here this year. Some of the local artists you might be familiar with. Ken Ted, Elena Piedra, Neymar Gorjan, Nan Ray, Master Ali Tan. Other than the daily visitors, um, their reception, usually there's a reception before the, um, the, the art exhibit, uh, usually brought in between 80 to 120 guests. I think I heard that the mayor of um, Monterey Park was visiting uh, at our last reception. So We received donation of $759.60 with an expenditure of $37. Last year, uh, my report uh, that we have approximately $19,000 in reserve. This number this year is revised down to $11,251.82. It took the committee many meetings with due diligence to reconcile this dollar amount. Since this is a donation which represents many donors' wishes and trust with our committee, 
we would appreciate, we know this may not happen, and it may be a lot of work, we would appreciate a detailed accounting record documenting this reduction adjustment to complete our due diligence. What is helpful is that a new donation policy was adopted to create accounting accuracy for the fund. And the library board has approved a quarterly report so our <coughs> committee can verify the accuracy of the fund recording, like a bank account. You will see it every quarterly. You know you have this uh, donation fund that is staying in the account. <coughs> our gallery is currently um, booked through the end of the year. We have exhibition till April 12 with Master Ali Tan, Chinese brush painting. Okay. We would love to have you visit our gallery and enjoy the culture of San Marino. And in closing, I'd like to thank um, our mayor and our councilwoman and men <laughs> and our city, your commitment to maintain our library as it, as it is. Uh, it, it is a privilege for us to preserve the history and the culture of this premier city, San Marino. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? And next is support groups. Oh. Uh, we have three major support groups to the San Marino <coughs> Public Library. The first, <coughs> as you know, are the trustees, which consists of five members and three alternates appointed by the city council. The trustees are advocates for the library and advise on library policy. They meet monthly and keep a close watch on all concerns of the library. The Friends of the Library was established in the late 60s to maintain and admit resources and services for the library. When the new library was constructed, they established a very successful bookstore with the help of an extremely dedicated staff of volunteers. They have raised and donated approximately $50,000 annually to provide to help purchasing children's books, funding special programs, and other library needs. The third group, support group, is the Library Foundation, which was established in 1995 with the purpose to establish supplemental funding source for the library. Approximately 10 years ago, together with the city of San Marino and the Kroll family, they raised the money for the construction of the library as you see it today. Through special events, they continue to raise funds for capital improvements and special projects as Jean desired. They are in the process now of establishing a permanent foundation for future funding. Any question? Next is uh, library facts. I have the privilege of wrapping everything up with facts and figures, the really exciting part. <laughs> okay, all right, well, maybe not. Um, <laughs> the figures I'm about to present are from 2017, 2018, the fiscal year. Of course, you've heard many of them already. Um, one of the things I found surprising, if you were to guess the percentage of San Marino households that hold the library <laughs> cards, would you guess that it's 83%? I was surprised it was that high. The library received nearly a quarter million visits last year averaging to almost 700 visits per day. Uh, patrons took out plenty of books as the yearly circulation was 240,695. Now, to keep the library's catalog current, last year nearly 6,000 new books were added to the collection, bringing the number of titles in the catalog to nearly 100,000. Of course, our library, as you just heard, uh, enjoys tremendous support from the community the generosity of which is noted on our donor wall. And last year, the library was able to purchase, as you heard, the self-checkout system to increase staff productivity and enhance maintenance of the library stock. This system, which uses RFID technology, was made possible because it was the main fundraising goal for the San Rita Public Library Foundation, which raised and donated $50,000 for its purchase. And as you heard, the Friends of the Library donated over $4,000 to this project as well. Of course, libraries aren't just about books. <coughs> Over 400 programs were offered last year for the community, some of which you've heard of already. Uh, these were presented throughout the year in partnership with the San Marino Historical Society, USC Emeriti, 
LA Opera, Huntington Hospital, the Braille Institute of Los Angeles, the Pasadena Tournament of Roses Association, and the Pasadena Humane Society. Attendance last year at our 444 programs totaled 12,589 attendees. And to prove that San Reno loves to read, even when on vacation, the library summer reading program had over a thousand participants of all ages. And if there's, if you don't like Google, if there's ever anything you need to know, you can always turn to our librarians. Last year they fielded over 14,000 questions from patrons. And as you already heard, uh, one of the important things we provide are passports. That's an important service. We help community members get their passports. And then you heard also earlier that that resulted in us taking in gross acceptance fees of over $220,000 last year. And finally, each year, the trade publication Library Journal, which was, by the way, founded in 1876 by Melville Dewey, who also invented the Dewey Decimal System. That was a library fact I got to share with Irene. I felt good about that. <laughs> Every year they publish their index of, of uh, public library service. It's a list of America's star libraries. And based on its size classification, San Marino's Crow Public Library was ranked in the top 5.9% in the nation and was one of the top 10 libraries in California. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. And if you have any questions, I advise we have a librarian here who can answer them for you. <laughs> How many books do we have? <laughs> it was in there. Can you pay up the numbers? Metrics. <laughs> 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 14,000 divided by 365 days. Are there any questions? I know. I was going to say most of our restroom, but probably not. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Anything else? No? No question? Okay. Um, any written communications or public writing? Public comments? Then we'll adjourn the meeting. Two hours. Six o'clock. Okay. okay.